Hello everybody and welcome to this quick overview of Quant Platform 2.0. It is for browser-based learning and financial data analytics. The platform covers most important areas in data science and artificial intelligence. Uh, it is about data, about development, of course Python focused, of course also Python for financial data science. We provide our training premium content why the platform you can do static and interactive visualizations overall it's browser based data science and you can also uh, use the collaboration and sharing features of the platform let me log into it here is the login of course you need proper credentials on the starting page, you see the latest video. This is from one of our previous training sessions that you can immediately access here. So you click on it and it starts playing. You can jump to a later point, for example. You also find the latest forum posts, for example, here about error persisting trading bot. If you say, well, this is an, uh, an interesting topic. You can click on it and you land right here in the uh, board Python for algorithmic trading in the thread here, which is called error persisting trading bot. You can also use the main navigation to navigate directly to the um, forum. Here you see a couple of uh, latest forum posts once again. You also see the board and how active they are. So Python for algorithmic trading is one of the most active ones that we have here. And you see there's much more than you see on the latest forum posts. Uh, you can also search the user forum for topics that are of interest to you. Via the same navigation, you can access the course materials here, for example, AI in finance, where you can scroll from the beginning down. That's a pretty long text in PDF. This has some 470 pages. And on the left hand side, you see the navigation with the hyperlinks and you can say, well, I want to jump, let's say, to chapter five about machine learning and immediately you arrive at machine learning. There's lots of code included, of course, in this uh, book. In the course, you don't need to retype it or to copy it here from the materials. All the codes are presented also on the cron platform, uh, ready for your execution. More on this in a minute. You can also navigate to the trainings part. I opened AI in finance. There is also the AI in finance class, which basically consists of reinforcement learning and AI in finance. So when you say, oh, reinforcement learning, that's a very interesting topic. Of course, you find here also the videos that immediately start playing. Again, you can jump around or you say, well, I've uh, seen already half of it. So that's all available, easy to access. And you can also um, open different instances of the Quant platform. So if you are using, for example, two screens, you can have the video on one screen and the code and or the text on another screen. Or if you are like myself, when you have three screens, you can basically have all the three elements, core elements of every class alongside each other. There are resources that come with the different modules. For example, this can be a slide deck where you find the link to the slide deck here under the module description, or you see here that there are a couple of Jupyter notebooks. You can open them from here, but what I want to show you is how you can access the codes via um, Jupyter Lab. To this end, I can open here Jupyter Lab. This takes a bit. This is based on Docker containers. So the Docker container is fired up and we provide for all delegates of our programs the same course content and the class contents here via central storage. So when you see courses here, for example, I opened AI in finance, you find a respective folder here, AI in finance, there are 17 Jupyter notebooks. When I click on the first one, you will see that this opens. And this is already executed. When you say, well, I want to work my way through this Jupyter Notebook, you can, for example, here restart the kernel and clear all outputs. And then you get to the beginning and you execute the cells as you are used to with every Jupyter Notebook implementation. So what does not work is that you save your changes here. 
So you see here artificial intelligence here with the dot this indicates that you have made changes that are not saved and this is by purpose because these are the original versions of the uh, Jupyter Notebooks and the codes that we provide so they shouldn't be overwritten but what you can always do you can use the save notebook as functionality and then for example save it in your root folder so simply deleting the path to the Jupyter Notebook and when I now navigate back you see that here the Jupyter Notebook appears basically it is a copy of the original Jupyter Notebook and now I can save my changes here so when I for example um, make a copy here and have now another cell or want to do some intermediate analysis for example I can now change and save uh, my changes afterwards. So this works um, any other folder than the original courses and training folders. So we also have within trainings here the trainings that you have seen in the navigation from before. So AI and finance, this presents now the codes that we have seen before in the module. So reinforcement learning 01 has the notebooks 01, 02 and 03 that we have seen in the module. You might see here that it says not secure. We have the platform SSN encrypted, but as soon as a Jupyter Notebook embeds something which is not uh, coming via an encrypted connection, it says not secure, but be assured we use proper SSL certificates here. So I can save my changes here. I can close it. And when I get back to my root folder, I can say, well, I'm now done. I'm finished. I don't need this anymore. And here I can also delete files, which is not possible within the courses and trainings folders and their subfolders. You can also upload data. So for example, here I'm in a, in a folder where there are a bunch of data files, CSV files. So I can upload such a CSV file. It appears on the left hand side. I can double click, can inspect it here, but most probably it would like to work with it. So I would open here, for example, terminal. You can adjust settings here by increase terminal font size and I can do it again maybe have a little bit of a larger font there. When you have a look, by default, you are in the root folder in order to access the codes that you see in the left-hand side, you need to navigate to notebooks, CD notebooks. This is a full uh, Linux-based container. You have all the flexibility and, and most of the tools probably that you would look for that you can access here. And now I have my data file plus on the left-hand side, the three folders that I see. I can start, for example, IPython to do some interactive analysis. I could, for example, do import pandas as pd, then import the data pd read csv, providing um, the file name. Here we go. And I can get started with maybe getting an overview and have a look at the first couple of lines that are in my data file. So I could have customized this a little bit better, for example, to, um, um, to use the date column as the index column, but this is just a starting point to show that you can upload data. You can, of course, also download the data. It's just via a right click, where here is the download functionality. We have uploaded data before, um, and when you are here, for example, finished, you can access, uh, exit IPython, and you have, as I said before, also other Linux tools such as HTOP available, which shows you the resources here. The Docker container has two cores and has um, a total of four gigs of RAM, including the swap partition that is there. You can also install Python packages that are not installed. Um, so for example, if there is some particular package that you might want to use that we don't provide by default, you have the flexibility to add this here to your Python installation as well. Once I'm finished, I might close this. I can as before also delete the data set if I don't need it anymore. So you've seen the text, including lots of math and quite a bit of code. I have shown you how to access the codes, for example, from the text, from the courses, as we call them. Um, I've also shown you the trainings part um, where we have videos, uh, plus some other resources, could be slide decks or something else, plus the codes, in general, some Jupyter Notebooks, plus maybe some Python scripts or modules. And you have access to all of them here on the platform, no need copy it and you can execute 
basically everything off the box. You have also full flexibility in terms of uploading, downloading data and um, copying, for example, certain subfolders. So this is all available in the usual manner here in JupyterLab. It is a wonderful tool from our perspective and uh, it is something we have uh, had an easy time to decide for now for PQP 2.0, which is now a fully scalable cloud-based infrastructure and JupyterLab for the execution is one core part. That much about the execution, we can and maybe should in order to save some resources, shut down JupyterLab. It's not really necessary, but it's nice for the housekeeping. And when we are finished, I can close the tab. I'm back here in my environment. When I've uh, stopped learning, I can also um, maybe do some changes here. Um, if this is of interest, change the password, change the email or upload an image. The image that you see here is uh, then displayed, for example, in the user forum. It's not used for anything else at this point in time. And once I'm done with everything, I can simply log out and close it down. So this was the quick overview of PQP or Quant Platform 2.0. If you're interested in what we have to offer uh, beyond the Quant Platform, which is at the core of our business, visit tpq.io. There you will see that everything what we do is centered around Python for Finance, we provide services, training like our certifications. We run the platform that I've just um, shown. We have open sourced a couple of libraries. I've written a bunch of books. Uh, about Python for finance and yeah, we also run events uh, live on site as well as virtual. So keep up with us, uh, visit the page, maybe sign up for our newsletter and I will be happy to speak to you soon. In the meantime, take care. Bye bye.